4, verses 1 through 11. Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. And today our topic is Sola Scriptura. Sola Scriptura. Which is Scripture alone. Scripture alone. And for a subtopic, for a subtopic, I would like to use no competing voices. No competing voices. Matthew 4, verses 1 to 11. And um, after I read the scripture, I'll explain it like I always do what I'm talking about. Matthew 4, 1 to 11. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. Yes. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones be commanded. But he answered and said, What? Well, it is, it is, is written. written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the, into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written. He shall give his angels charge on you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. And Jesus said to him, what did he say? It is written again, you shall not tip the Lord your God. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan. Why? For it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Thank you. That is the word of God. In general, in general, the, the pillar, because all five of these uh, souls are pillars of the Reformation, what hold the Reformation up. But the, 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 the teaching of Sola Scriptura, that is pretty much the foundation of the Reformation, that the Reformation was built on. This is so because it was a champion during a time where the Holy Roman Empire or the Roman Catholic Church was ruled by three departments and in three ways. And so in those three ways, there was the Pope, which we still have the Pope nowadays. There's so many popes. And so the Pope nowadays, the Church of Rome considers the Pope to be infallible. And I told you what that word means. Infallible means what? Without mistake. And we know that that is a big mistake. Because the Pope is what? A human being. And he is capable, very capable, does make mistakes. And the, the Roman church typically, typically the Roman church puts the Pope just under God. Now, and that's totally wrong. Now, just a little backstory again, this is what Bible studies for. But a little backstory on the Pope. They believe that Peter was the first Pope because Peter was the, the chief apostle. Peter was the head apostle. And so they believe that Peter was the first Pope. And so that's still wrong. Does it? It's, it's not true. But the apostles were given authority by Christ to give commands to the church, to teach the church, and what the apostles gave to the church, because they didn't have the New Testament then, all they had was the um, Old Testament. So the 
the, the New Testament church, the church was just born, so the apostles, what they were writing, became doctrine, became the New Testament. As they were living it, as they were writing it, those things that remain after they died, which we have, why we have these 66 books, is because, and, and, and no more, why we have these 66 books and no more, is because what we had left is what was written by the apostles. And being that the apostles were called by Jesus Christ, they had the authority. They had the authority to write scripture. They had the authority to command the church. They had the authority to say what goes and what does not because that was given to them by Christ. And therefore what was written was left. And therefore that's where the New Testament comes from. And that's why we don't accept the other stuff. Because in the, in the Roman and the Catholic Bibles, they have 73 books. The Apocrypha is in their Bible. And although the Apocrypha may say some good stuff, and it does say some good stuff. However, the Apocrypha has a lot of things where they worship angels in the Apocrypha. And we just read here, worship God alone. So then if the angels were worshiped as Satan, who was an angel, was trying to get Jesus to worship him, we know that is a big fact. No, no. So then in, in the Apocrypha, you have angel worship, and in these 66 books, angel worship is prohibited. My Lord. That only thing we can um, uh, worship is God, the only person we can worship is God, then we must do away with those books. I don't care what good they have in them, oh, right? yeah. because they have things that are against the scripture. Oh, okay. And then some of the books came during that 400 year period between Malachi and Matthew, where God was not speaking. And so if God is not speaking and you're still writing, I don't know who spoke those words. They weren't divinely inspired. They may be good. I didn't say God stopped working, but between Malachi and Matthew, God was not speaking. Therefore, whatever you wrote, no matter how good it was, it's not inspired. Just like today, after Jesus closed Revelation, Whatever it's written, we might have got some good stuff. We got some good books. We got some good teachers. We got some good preachers. We got people who call themselves apostles. But God said, after Jesus said, after this, if any man come up with a new revelation, he said, what? That man should be a curse. Amen. His name will be what? Taken out of the Lamb's book of life. He said, nothing more. Yes. Don't change nothing. And don't add nothing. That's right. Amen. That's right. And don't take away nothing. My Lord. Yeah. So then there should be no voice. No matter how well we mean, there should be no voice that competes with the voice of God in Scripture. Praise God. So, number one is the Pope. The Pope is considered to be without mistake. We know that's the biggest thing. Then the second way that the uh, uh, Holy Roman uh, Empire was ruled was uh, by the Catholic Church traditions. So that they would do things like, again, the Eucharist, or what we call the Lord's Supper, or uh, communion. They believe, because of a faulty understanding, again, mind you, that when we read the scripture, the scripture says what it says. God is not responsible for our misunderstanding of what it says. You understand? God is not responsible to uphold our misunder misunderstanding or misinterpretations of his word. So they believe in the, the, the communion that the, the, the bread or the cracker that we eat literally becomes Jesus' body. That's called transubstantiation. No. No. Amen. No man. No ham. <laughs> no bird. And they believe that the little cup of wine or the grape juice literally becomes the blood of Christ. Wow. But we know that can be a mistake for when uh, John chapter 6, Jesus said, if you don't uh, uh, eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you're not, not worthy to follow me. And they said, this is a hard thing. He was like, we supposed to eat your flesh and drink your blood so that we know that that wasn't what it meant. But in the Roman Catholic Church, they take that as what he meant. But we take it as a means of grace. We take it as, like he said, this is my body. This is a representation of my body. This, when you do this, do this in what? Remembrance of me, not that this turns into me. Amen. 
Jesus did not promote cannibalism. Amen. So again, another foolish thing, but it came from the traditions of men. It came from the traditions of the Roman Catholic Church, which they were imposing on the church, saying that this is what you are supposed to do, or else you're not saved. Again, adding some type of work to salvation itself. And then finally, least of all, was the, was the authority of Scripture. This was the Bible way that, that the church was ran in Rome. The, the, the Holy Scriptures had authority under the Pope and under church tradition. Then the Scriptures have the authority. You know, it's, it's just a Bible containing the word of the living God with ordinances and commands given by the Creator himself. That was obviously not enough for the Roman Catholic Church to live by. So the Reformation began on the foundation that Scripture alone, not the Pope, not the Roman government, not church tradition, or anything else, is to govern the life and the practice of believers. That there is no other word capable, that there is no other governing body capable, that there is no other voice that competes with the voice we hear in Scripture. Amen. Sola Scriptura. Scripture alone. No other voice should or can compete with the voice of God My in Scripture. And here we have the sure word of God. So, when we look at uh, Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, we see that Jesus was uh, sent out to the wilderness to be tempted. And this, again, was the work of the Holy Spirit. This is something that Jesus had to fulfill. This is something that Jesus had to go through, and the Holy Spirit led him out. Amen. And so, and right there, right there, let me just hit while well, it's right there. It said, Jesus was led out by the Spirit. Amen. Mm, praise God. So what does that mean? Now, we know when Jesus talked about his father, mm -hmm. what he called him? Father. father. Amen. <laughs> the scripture here says he was led out by who? The spirit. The spirit. That must mean the spirit who led Jesus out isn't the same person as Jesus. Therefore, they did the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But I just want to throw that in there to make sure that you understand that there is a distinction in persons. Oh, yes. Jesus, I mean, excuse me, God is one. Mm -hmm. He is one in being. Mm -hmm. There's one God. His name is Yahweh, or Yah for sure. His name is Yahweh. But he is three persons. Three distinct persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They equal the one God. Thank you. When you call Yahweh, that's the Father. When you call Yahweh, that's the Son. When you call Yahweh, that is the Holy Spirit. All three are one. one. Come on. One God. But don't mistake it for, for what traditionally is understood as oneness. There is a oneness in the Godhead, obviously. But not oneness as in what we would call, what is called modalism, where in heaven he's the Father, and then on earth he's the Son, and then he went back and sent back the Holy Spirit, but he came back as the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's all. That's a wrong understanding. Like because people take that scripture where Jesus said, it's, it's better than I told. So the Holy Spirit can come, meaning that they both can't be here at the same time. That wasn't what Jesus was saying. That wasn't what Jesus was saying. Because God is omnipotent, God is everywhere, all the while. But Jesus, in the human form, Jesus being God in the flesh, can only be in one place at one time. So it's better for me to go, because when the Holy Spirit comes, he will fill you all. He will be all and in all believers. Amen. At the same time, everywhere at once. So, I just had to throw that in so y'all can have that understanding. Amen. But, we see Jesus, he meets the devil. The devil is the enemy of all creation. The devil is the enemy of all creation. And Jesus met him face to face out there in the wilderness. And Jesus is tempted by him at his weakest point. At his weakest, Jesus was tempted. And I want y'all to understand, even at his weakest, Jesus didn't even think to quit. He didn't 
he never meant that. to sin. Uh, it wasn't, he uh, wasn't any closer to sinning yeah, at his weakest. Come on, my Lord. Come on, man. He wasn't any closer to sinning in word, deed, or thought at his weakest moment. So I don't want anybody to even, like sometimes you kind of, I don't know if y'all feel it, but sometimes kind of, like, man, like, was Jesus close? Like, like did he even, even consider it? No. Amen. Never a thought. Hallelujah. Never a thought. Oh. Thank you. He is the perfect and holy one. Woo. And Lord, yeah. So he goes out there and Satan, and this is Exhibit A. Right. Exhibit A, solar scripture or scripture alone. He goes out there and Satan is trying to tempt him. Three times Satan tried to tempt him. And what was Jesus' response? Every single time. Sola scriptural. Scripture alone. When Jesus responded to say what did he said, it is written. He did not say, I heard. He did not say, I thought. He did not say, I believe. He said what? It is written. Yes. Come on. Yeah. That's what Jesus said. Amen. Remember the subtopic. What? No competing voices. We are human, which means like the cult. We are what? Follow. What does that mean? We are capable to what? Make mistakes. Jesus Christ is what? Infallible, and he is not capable of making what? Mistakes. And when Jesus Christ, God in what? Human form, God in the flesh, came to earth and he was tempted by the enemy of all humanity, his answer was not, I believe. His answer was not, I think. His answer was not, I know. His answer was not, I heard. His answer was what? It is written. He combated Satan with what? The word of God alone. That's exhibit A. Exhibit B. Come on now. Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 2. God, who at various times and in various ways, spoke in times past to who? The fathers, by the prophets, he spoke by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us, who believers, spoken to us by him, his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom he also made the world. Uh, I already mentioned that in the end of Revelation, Jesus closed the canon. That's how we know. Because another thing about the Apocrypha, a lot of those books that they have in the Roman Catholic Bible, a lot of those books come from, and even I think the King James 1611 has the Apocrypha in it. But a lot of those books come from the second century. We know that the canon was closed by Jesus Christ himself, written down by John, uh, before the end of the first century. So then all of those books that were written after that, they missed the cutoff. You missed the date. You're not divinely inspired because Jesus said that's it. Amen. Jesus said that's it. So then if, here's the thing, here's the thing. Everybody wants to be an apostle, right? Everybody wants to be a prophet. But when Jesus spoke in Revelation, and, and, and what, what was Revelation? Can you the first bit of Revelation? This is the revelation of God to Jesus Christ that he gave to John. <clears throat> this is the revelation of Jesus Christ was the revelation of God in the flesh. Matter of fact, John 1.18 says, the only, he said, no man has ever seen God, only the only begotten God represents God, shows God to us. The holy, the holy trinity, my Lord, is embodied in Christ. He was the fullness of the Godhead in what? Bodily form. Amen. Everything that God is, he revealed himself through Jesus Christ. Amen. So, if Jesus 
Christ is the end all, be all of the revelation of God. If Jesus Christ is the end all, be all of prophecy, if Jesus Christ is the end all, be all of kings, if Jesus Christ is the end all, be all of priests, priest, prophet, and king, then there is no more to come after me. So then be very, very careful of who you listen to come that on. claim to be a prophet. Come on, my Lord. I do not, personally, I do not believe in modern day prophets. My Lord. I don't. Come on. Thank you. That is different from saying that God can allow somebody to speak prophetically. That's different. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, despise my prophecy. God can speak a prophecy through me. God can speak a prophecy through any one of you. That does not make you a prophet. Come on. Come on. Because when you hear these prophets nowadays, they say, hey, this person will win the election. And then they will win the election. That's supposed to be it for you. That's supposed to be the end for you. You ain't supposed to say nothing else in the name of God because you claim that God told such and such and such was born happening. And the Bible says if God gives his prophecy or if a prophet comes and they speak something and it does not come to pass, he said don't even worry about him. But nowadays you say, oh well we're human. We can get it wrong. We certainly can't. That's why you make sure before you open your mouth and say God said it, you better make sure God said it. Come on. Because if you say God said and God didn't say it, that automatically even one time, even one time, you don't get two chances. When you open your mouth and say God said and God did not say it, that makes you a what? False. Say it. Uh -uh. False. Say it. False prophet. Say it. False prophet. You can't get up here and say, uh oh, well, I, I, I was mistaken. God don't make no mistakes. When you read this Bible, when God gave the word, he said one of the litmus tests of the prophets was that what? When they speak, if they're speaking from me, it'll what? Come to pass. And if it don't come to pass, you shouldn't hear him. I didn't give him that word. He said, he, the Bible even says he spoke, he spoke presumptuously. He spoke thinking he heard from me. He spoke thinking that that's what I told him. And even you see some scriptures where God sent a lying spirit to, to tell lies to these prophets. Oh, can you go with the war? Yeah, I got the word. Yeah, you got the word from a lying spirit. My Lord. That makes you a what? A lie. False prophet. <laughs> so a whole bunch of people got wrong prophecies from people who claim to be prophets. That's because you're not one. All because God may have spoken a prophecy to you one time does not make you a prophet. It just makes you a vessel. And that's the thing. Everybody wants to be a big dog, but nobody wants to do the dirty work. Everybody wants to be in the forefront, but nobody wants to be obedient. Everybody wants the blessing, but don't nobody want to live holy. Amen. You ain't going to tell me that every prophecy come out of your mouth that God is telling you to tell somebody else that he's going to do this for you. He's going to do that for you. But he told them to live holy. He didn't tell you to stop looking at pornography. He didn't tell you to stop cheating on your wife. He didn't tell you none of that. But he told them he's going to bless you. Somebody was lying. Yeah. Somebody was lying. God will bless you while you're still messing. Yeah. He's not. That voice you're hearing is a lie. That voice you're hearing is what it, what, what it might got to be. Be, be wary of those who come and speak peace when there is no peace. Right. You come and tell the people that there's peace when God said, no, destruction is coming. You're not here. Yes, sir. No. My Lord. You're not here. Did God But if Jesus is God's ultimate revelation to mankind, or since, not if, since Jesus is God's ultimate revelation to mankind, unless you're sure, that you're sure, that you're sure, 
that you're sure. And the mind, I tell y'all, when God, when I feel like God tell me something, y'all let me be say God said. I tell y'all what. I feel like now that's a difference. There's a difference between God said it, and I feel like God is leading me this way. Or I feel like God is telling me to do this. Right. And I said, when he tells you to do something, or when he tells you something, he will give you what? Confirmation. Every single time. Everything established by the mouth of what? Two or three witnesses. Amen. When God speaks to me, he already, he already knows me like a book. I'm looking for confirmation. And he just pop, 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 pop. And I'm like, okay, now I know you. Amen. I told, I told God, you know, talk to me like I'm an idiot. Because I am. Talk to me like I'm an idiot. Teach me like I'm an idiot. So then I know it's you so that way I don't go. Because I ain't going to do nothing if I ain't sure you told me to do it. That's all right. Come on now. Amen. When I, when I started that class, I said, I, I don't even know how it's going to work. But I put it out there that I got the class started. Somebody hit me on my inbox, I think, that day, that same day, and said, my God, I was waiting. I was waiting for that. I wanted something. I needed something. I'm hungry. And God put you right there in you. To God be the Lord. Amen. That's why. But again, I don't know that I'm hearing from God unless you what? Confirm mm -hmm. your message to me. Yeah. Yeah. Even in um, we just reading yesterday, me and the kids, Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15, where uh, they went to the Jerusalem Council and, and, and they um, were dealing with the, the, the Gentiles, us. They were dealing with the Gentile church. And they were saying how there were some people coming saying, hey, you got to keep the law of Moses. Y'all got to get circumcised in order to be saved. Y'all got to get circumcised and follow the law of Moses. And they went to the Jerusalem Council, and Paul and Peter and Barnabas stood up and said, No, God is dealing with them just like He dealt with us. We heard them speaking tongues. We saw God working in them just like He worked in us. We believe that God can save them by grace. Amen. And these other guys on the other side, the Pharisees, say, No, they got to keep the law of Moses because that's what we've been doing. Our forefathers, everybody in our uh, 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 culture has been doing it. And if they won't be. Love and I'm saying God, they need to do the same stuff we got to do. But the Jerusalem Council said, we find it good, and the Holy Spirit finds it good that we don't lay on you no more burden of that law. Just stay away from sexual immorality, stay away from things strangled, from um, meat with blood in it, and stay away from, uh, it was one more thing. But he said, stay away from these four things, and you'll do with it. He said, leave the law alone. And then they sent, they sent a letter out. And then when they sent the letter, they said, in the letter, and we're going to be sending a couple more guys to confirm this message. Everything by the mouth of what? Two or three witnesses. That's exhibit B. Yes. 